Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, um, getting up and um, feeling well. Certainly having a great start to your Wednesday and a great week out there so far. It's been a pretty active week as far as severe weather. Yesterday was uh, somewhat of a, another active day. Nothing compared to Monday, but today will be more active than yesterday, but probably not quite as active as Monday. We do have a very large enhanced risk that we are waking up to this morning. We're going to break that down as detailed as we can. Uh, talk about all the areas. If I do miss your area, I do apologize. <clears throat> this morning's kind of been a rocky morning for the uh, West family. Uh, it's the first um, first day of school, which is exciting. It's fun. But unfortunately, uh, my oldest girl who's going into third grade, my youngest little girl is going into first. But my oldest girl, Izzy, uh, she has a uh, woke up with a little bit of a cough. So she's um, um, definitely trying to fight through it. <laughs> it seems like that uh, you know, she hasn't been sick all, all summer, and I don't think she's necessarily very sick right now um, because she's not really running a fever or anything like that, but she's dealing with just a little bit of a cough this morning. She gets really embarrassed when she starts coughing in class and things like that. Um, so uh, definitely just asking for prayers that, that cough goes away for her. Uh, today is obviously a big day for kids, big day for um, teachers parents, things like that. So I'm um, definitely asking for prayers right off the dot for that. I know you guys are my, my family. We're all family here. We look out for one another. So that's my um, prayer request for you guys this morning is that that cough goes away. I can hear coughing in the background this video. Um, so hopefully it goes away. Uh, but it's definitely been a kind of a rocky morning here uh, with just, uh, you know, getting back into the routine of things. So if you notice I'm a little uh, messy in this video, I do apologize right off the dot. Um, of course, you know, not every video is going to be perfection, that's for sure. So uh, we're going to break it down for you folks. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about, please put those in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. Let's take a look at water vapor loop this morning like we always do. Ridge is completely flattened out, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be hot in areas of Texas and the deep south and Really, uh, really hugged up against that Gulf Coast line is where it's going to be really hot and humid. A lot of heat advisories, excessive heat warnings out there. Because of that, you see this big blob of white. That's basically where there's more water content in the atmosphere, which typically symbolizes a lot of shower and storm activity. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here in the middle of the country. This is beginning to move into areas of Arkansas, Missouri. And that's going to be a tough forecast today. Just trying to figure out what the morning convection does to the atmosphere. Uh, things like that. I think there could be a kind of a multi-round setup today for areas of Missouri and Arkansas, and we're going to try to explain that in this video. I can tell you the NAM and the HRRR model uh, really differ, um, are really different um, for the second half of the day, but I'm, I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to compare all the model guidance in this video just because it's 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 a morning, it's a kind of a chaotic morning because I got to get them get them to school a little bit earlier than I typically do. So um, I got to end this video uh, probably a little quicker than I normally do. But I'm gonna still get you guys some really good information. Uh, but we're watching this area of storms. It's eventually going to drift downstream, affect Tennessee areas of the deep south as we make our way into later into the day. And then we're gonna expect a little bit of strong and severe storm action up here. All this rain also could uh, provide a flooding scenario. So we'll definitely watch what happens. We take a look at what's actually going on on radar. And this is that big blob of white you just saw in the water vapor loop. This is actually what's going on on radar. A lot of shower and storm activity. Nothing severe. We got a flash flood warning in portions of central Kansas. We got some clustered up storms uh, moving through areas of northern Missouri. We got storms moving into Arkansas, northwest, Ar uh, I'm sorry, into Missouri, northwest Arkansas this morning. And I will watch to see how fast this clears out. Um, as this moves into further into Missouri, into Illinois, this will bring just kind of a solid rain, a little bit of a severe weather threat, but not super high up here in like northern Missouri and Illinois, but there will be a threat. But once you work your way into this area of the country right into here, like Arkansas, southern Missouri, Tennessee, um, western Tennessee, really severe weather threat is certainly there um, today. But we'll watch to see as this clears out, and then we'll see if this atmosphere can really become unstable again elsewhere um some waking up with some heavy rain in iowa some storms in nebraska so speaking of the severe weather the storm prediction center update for today this is for right now as of just before 6 a uh, 7 a.m eastern time uh, so always always a reminder guys i issue another update at around 8 45 9 o'clock 
Eastern time every morning. Um, so on a day where it, there's going to be a lot of severe weather, typically it changes. It either broadens, we get an increase, a decrease. I do not expect, <clears throat> excuse me, I do not expect today to go to a moderate risk at all. If it does, I will be shocked. Okay. Um, but I'm not expecting a moderate risk out the day. Um, just the confidence is just not even close to being there. And uh, just the, the severe we weather threat doesn't warrant it. But we do have a large enhanced risk that, like, like I said, it covers southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, all the way to Nashville, Tennessee for later today, Jackson, Memphis, portions of northern Alabama, and extreme northern Mississippi, okay? Slight risk that surrounds it, all the way back from Tulsa, uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, well, uh, not quite in Kansas City, but like the Jefferson City area, Columbia, Missouri, St. Louis, uh, Evansville, Bowling Green, Paducah, Mayfield region have an enhanced risk, so slight risk all the way to Chattanooga. Marginal risk extends all the way into the Western Carolinas, where I think we watch on the, uh, into the wee hours of the morning tonight, uh, tomorrow morning, or we have to watch to see if this line of storms is still pretty strong as it gets into the late night hours, like in Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, the mountains of Tennessee, North Carolina. We definitely need to watch. Marginal risk up here. You guys will have a little bit of a chance for some strong and severe storm action. The tornado threat, I mean, it, you got a pretty large 5% risk in the brown area. 5% risk of a tornado and then 25 miles in the given location in the brown area. Okay. Uh, the wind threat, that is what's driving this enhanced risk today. You got a 30% risk of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher. It's 55 to 60 miles per hour, mile per hour readings within 25 miles in a given location in this um, red area. The yellow area, same criteria, but there's a 15% risk of it. So uh, really the, the theme today is watching one to two rounds of storms from what we call a mesoscale convective system. And uh, I've talked about it many times this summer. Basically, these, this line of storms can be very powerful. And they, a, lot, a lot of times they can produce uh, tornadoes embedded in this line. Um, and more times than not, they produce damage of winds that can knock out power, things like that. So that is going to be the general theme for today. Excessive rainfall outlook, pretty large, slight risk. I mean, very, very large. It, it, you know, expands across areas of the Midwest, even the Ohio Valley, the Mid-South, Mississippi Valley regions. That means there's a 15% risk of flashlight guidance being exceeded into this region. So we'll talk a little bit on that also. Um, watches, warnings, um, red flag warnings mixed in with excessive heat um, warnings. That's not a good combination. That means it's very hot and it's very dry. And it's gotten very dry in Texas over the last couple weeks where you guys are getting a lot of rain in this region. But, man, over the last couple weeks, it's gotten pretty dry. Um, heat advisories, you know, pretty much confined to the extreme southern states. But it's going to be very hot in Florida today, excessive heat warnings. Uh, one of my guys who tweets me a lot in um in Florida, I believe he's on the east coast of Florida. He said that you know around eight something a.m. yesterday, the the air temperature was already like eighty like eighty something degrees with a dew point of eighty one, making the heat index like almost a hundred degrees already at like in the morning time. So it's very hot, very humid in Florida. It always is, but today will be even extra compared to what it typically is on average in August. So. Guys, um, as far as the tropics, I had somebody comment. And I don't blame them. Um, there's nothing going on in the tropics right now. That's why I haven't talked about it. Um, if I had time, I would get a little bit more detailed on it. But there's nothing going on as we are nearing the mid-August time frame. And just nothing to speak on. Uh, GFS, the crazy GFS, isn't even showing any fantasy, uh, fantasy hurricanes out there. No crazy long-range hurricanes. Nothing. It's just quiet. It's just a quiet period. So I'm, I'm watching it. It's not that I'm not watching it. It's just, I mean, we got a lot going on in the homeland right now, right? We need to figure that one out. So um, we are going to, let's go on and get this off. Um, we are going to take this off. And what we're going to do first, we're just going to talk about the entire severe weather threat area. Because unfortunately, um, when the, the site that I use, Weather Bell, it does not have a good region for this. I wish I could click one region for this entire area and it would cover everybody. But it does not. So we're going to start off by talking about Arkansas kind of surrounding regions. The AAAR model is doing pretty well with initializing the storms. I mean, I would say it's doing above average. So we continue to make our way into the morning hours. This is in central time. So this time up here you see on your screen, whether you're watching on the TV or phone, back this up one hour, and that's in central time. So this is an eastern, 8 a.m., so it's 7 a.m. 
you keep this going. All this morning convection at this time, it's about mid-morning, is riding through areas of Missouri. You can now rule out some of these storms in northern Arkansas. One thing I'm not going to have a chance to really do in this morning's video is talking about the, the parameters, the um, uh, the atmospheric players that's driving this. Just, just don't have a whole lot of time to go into that. We're just going to give you straight up what model guidance is showing this morning. But, I mean, this is around 10 a.m. Some of these storms, like near Jonesboro, uh, areas of the Ozarks in northern Arkansas, certainly could be dealing with some severe weather. Um, but I would I don't expect the morning time frame to be that bad. As we work our way into the early afternoon time frame, you got some strengthening sails up here near the Springfield area. It's around 1 to 2 p.m. Okay, but you got some latching of kind of the southern area of this moisture. And you got some storms that are beginning to strengthen around the boot hill of Missouri region. If you're a town and community in that area, storms are starting to get a little bit stronger. Uh, this could be a very strong storm. Remember, this is just model guidance. This isn't the con grand conclusion of what's going to happen. Uh, some people treat their hourly forecast like that, too. They just treat it like that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, so just remember, I'm showing you guidance. It's just helping us along the way to try to figure out the evolution of these storms today. Uh, 3 to 4 p.m., you got some storms around the Jonesboro region. And these continue to move. I think it gets very active in kind of western uh, Tennessee, the Memphis area, the Jackson uh, region, all the way up to, what is it, Clarksville, Tennessee. You guys, I would say around mid to late afternoon begins to get pretty active. So this is our first cluster of storms, right? This continues. And you areas in western Kentucky, southern Illinois, I'm not leaving you guys hanging. I'm going to talk about you guys in another time, another little frame here. There's another area of storms that gets going around 6 p.m. in southern Arkansas, okay, kind of like the Ozark Plateau region, um, uh, south of, I would say, Interstate 44. Some powerful storms get going again, all right? And I want to note, everything you're show seeing here, there is an isolated tornado risk, all right? Damaging wind risk is definitely the biggest threat. And you're going to have a risk of hell, too, which I don't think, I think I kind of gypped you guys on the hill. But there's a 15% risk of in this yellow area of hell exceeding one inch in diameter. I wouldn't be surprised if this increases hell risk, but we'll see what happens. But going back to this, um, I, I expect another line of storms that moves through really, really late in the afternoon, mainly in the evening time frame, and really begins to move through areas of, uh, what is that, Popular Bluff, uh, starts to surge through the Boot Hill, Missouri, uh, western areas of Kentucky. And this is around 10 p.m. The sun is already set. And I'm expecting another line of intense storms to really start moving through late in the evening. And this could build back all the way into northern Arkansas. At this point, it's about midnight. you got an area of storms developing back west um, in southern Missouri, um, northern Arkansas, especially northeast portions of the state, and a nasty-looking area of storms surging through the Nashville area. And we just got to watch this area right in here later tonight to the wee hours of the morning. This could really get strong, okay? Um, as far as damaging winds, all right, we will watch the first little area of storms that gets going. All right, um, we'll watch this little area of storms down here. You see these little pockets of light, 80 to 90 mile per hour winds in this region, okay? But at this point, we're about 7, 7 p.m. You don't see any kind of, any real widespread crazy wind gusts. Uh, this is in one hour intervals. Do remember that. Um, so if you see weird little, weird little gaps in between each little area of, of strong winds, it's just in one hour intervals. That's why that doesn't mean in, in these areas between this, these stronger winds ain't going to see nothing. It's just going in one hour intervals. So, but you start to move through later in the evening and you see this little area right here in the boot hill, uh, late evening, I'm telling you, there's probably going to be an intense line of storms potentially in this region right here. All right. So if you live around the popular buff area, um, Jonesboro, down to Memphis, also Dyersburg. Um, Martin, um, uh, basically this boot, the boot hill of Missouri, I would watch out later this evening, intense line of storms could work through this region right here. This producing damaging winds, the updraft felicity swath with these storms, especially if there's any individual storms that get going, I, I think there's going to be a corridor right in here, right in this 5% risk area. Um, you see these high highlighted colors, greens, yellows, reds, things like that. That's indicating where there's rotating updraft. So that means we're probably going to have some storms that are rotating. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to drop a tornado, guys. But that means that they're definitely going to be rotating out there and they're going to have a risk to pump out a tornado. And I think that I think we could definitely see a tornado or two out of this setup today in this region. So this is the area you need to watch right here, these highlighted colors. 
All right, we go a little bit further north up into Missouri because I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I think, you know, and if you look at the Storm Prediction Center, you know, you do have the slight risk that goes all the way up to north central um, Missouri. But, you know, I, I really think that uh, most of Missouri up here is just going to get more just widespread heavy rain. We'll stop it here. This is around lunchtime. you got some rain moving into the St. Louis area. I think there's been a couple people who said they haven't. Uh, I think there's one person, I uh, keep reading the comments, that say they keep getting um, gypped with rain um over the last few weeks I, I think you're going to get some solid rain later today in this area so hopefully you get your uh, cup, cup full of rain out there um but uh definitely some heavy rain beginning to move into western areas of illinois as we make our way into the afternoon hours it starts to take over all the western illinois springfield peoria even all the way up to uh like davenport iowa i think some rain can make it into the region Bloomington, uh, and it just moves through. But there's some of these storms that could be strong and severe. Like you see these little clusters of storms right here around the Peoria area. These could certainly pack a punch, strong and severe as possible. You keep this going, it's around 3, 4, 5. It's around 5 p.m. at this point. You got some storms uh, that are beginning to strengthen somewhat in uh, eastern areas of Illinois, western areas of Indiana. So if you live in this region right in here, um, you know, Champaign area over the Lafayette, even into Indianapolis, I think you can get some strong and severe storms. Nothing too crazy, but I think it's definitely possible later this afternoon into this evening. And um, like I said, you know, in Kentucky, I think you could get active. I think you could get a one-two punch today. I think about mid-late afternoon you can get some storms, and then you got to watch for some more storms in Kentucky a little bit later tonight in this region. But um, we'll take out um, – Dang, I meant to have another panel pulled up for this region. I definitely think a lot of rain could fall in this region, and I'll take a more widespread look at this um, here in a second. But I definitely think a good bit of rain could fall in this region today. This is between now and the next 24 hours. You got a corridor of heavy rain that basically streaks right through central Illinois, central areas of Indiana, of one to two inches of rain. Okay, a lot of rain is probably going to fall in northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, especially, uh, I would say, well, really anywhere in the next 18 hours really um but i mean so you know rain is a big story today too a lot of rain could fall one to two inches of rain scattered across this entire region of course find where you live and um definitely look at how much it's showing but this is from the national weather service a lot of rain can fall um so be careful with severe weather even up in missouri illinois indiana um i think that a severe weather threat isn't quite as high down there let's talk about the deep south we will watch this first wave that comes in we already kind of talked about Western Tennessee some. We'll talk about them again, though. Uh, Memphis uh, to Jackson, some storms could move through uh, mid-afternoon, push through the region. These could really intensify. I want to watch these cells right into here of kind of southwest, western areas of Tennessee, even extreme northern Mississippi. All right, you definitely want to watch for these cells, all right? They got all these um, ingredients funneling into the bottom feeders of these storms, and I think that these could produce some large all hazards. I don't think you're going to get a tornado outbreak or anything like that, but I do think these will be spinning some damaging winds. Isolated tornado threat is certainly going to be there. And then we'll watch these clusters of storms, okay? This is around 6, 7 p.m. Moving through the heart of Tennessee, uh, starting to move towards that Interstate 65 kind of uh, corridor. And then these could blast through the Huntsville area, could blast through the uh, Florence region, you know, around 8 to 9 p.m., continue to move. At the same time, you got another area of storms coming in uh, upstream. And uh, these storms can make it all the way to the Chattanooga region, the Cumberland Plateau, uh, late this evening. Uh, will they still be maintaining in strength? Not completely sure. We're just not sure until we really see what's happening about midday today. But I am watching this other cluster of storms that continues to move in. And I think this could be quite intense for Clarksville, Jackson, Dyersburg, and Nashville. Late evening, around the midnight time frame, I really want to watch these storms Um that are really pumping a big-time damaging wind threat. Really just kind of a midnight, what we call a mesoscale convective system, MCS for short. These blasts through the state of Tennessee. And I think that you really need to watch out. Yes, today, this afternoon, this evening for Tennessee, but I'd really watch out overnight tonight too if the HRRR model was on to something here. But it really wants to pump out a lot of heavy rain and then just clusters of storms that basically stretch from northern Arkansas throughout the entire state of Tennessee, just about. And these could really pack a punch overnight. So if you go to bed tonight in Tennessee and you're like, it didn't do anything tonight, uh, today, Mitch, just hold off because tonight could be totally different. So 
Now, this cluster of storms in Tennessee, and then what the NAM shows for this, it's pretty much similar, but it's a little different. It's the same general idea. It thinks Tennessee is going to be very active tonight. So please be aware of this for sure. Um, as far as that damaging wind threat, this first little area of storms could pack a punch this afternoon. If, is, if this is the way it develops, it could develop a little bit further south, a little bit further north. But you see these little areas, these colors, that's winds exceeding 60, 70 miles per hour in these little clusters of storms. So I think that stronger winds is going to happen in this area. I would lean towards no, but you can't rule it out. But then you watch this other area of storms, like I said, that moves out the Boot Hill, Missouri into Tennessee. And remember, this is in one hour increments. So this little these little gaps in between this, that's not what's going to happen. These connect. It's just in one hour intervals. I always just want to reiterate that, guys. I know I say it over and over again. But as you can tell, this is the swath of gusty winds, strong winds that moves through really late evening from the northwest to the east to the southeast um, throughout the night. A corridor that goes basically almost into the entire state of Tennessee, northern Alabama, even northern Georgia of pretty intense storms. This can make it all the way to the upstate of South Carolina as we're waking up tomorrow morning. We're just not sure if that's going to be the way it goes. And that, and what this cluster of storms does right here is going to affect what, hap affects what happens with our severe weather threat tomorrow for like the Carolinas in the southeast because there is already a slight risk for the areas of the Carolinas. So um, Updraft Felicity Swath, I'm telling you, you definitely want to watch this little area right here. This will be for more so um, later to this afternoon. I want to watch a tornado threat along this area right in here. Okay. But all this area right in here is for what happens tonight. This just indicates the chance for some updrafts to be rotating. Okay. Uh, so there will be a tornado threat. We make our way a little bit further north, and we've kind of already talked about most of these areas, but I'll take a little bit of a better vantage point of this that shows a lot more areas. But like I said, we'll watch out for these storms that kind of blast through this area today. It will make it all the way to Ohio later this evening. Uh, I think it'll be just more so some heavy rain for Ohio, some rumbles of thunder. Uh, but I definitely want to watch out western Kentucky for this cluster of storms, especially extreme western Kentucky later this evening. Everybody else in Kentucky, Ohio, just more, just heavy rains and rumbles of thunder. Cannot roll out a strong and severe storm, but I think it's just going to be more so a heavy rain that kind of moves through this area as we're getting into tomorrow. A little bit broader look at the rainfall for these areas. Like I said, that corridor of heavy rain from southern Iowa, northern Ark, I'm sorry, northern Missouri, all the way through uh, Illinois, Indiana, even into areas of Ohio, I think southeast Ohio. Um, and this only goes 24 hours out till tomorrow morning, but I think you guys could get a lot of rain. You know, Cincinnati um, could get a good bit of rain. And then there's a corridor down here, southern Arkansas. I'm sorry, I'm getting my states mixed up. Southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, into Tennessee that could get two, three inches of rain, one to three inches of rain in this area. So, all right, that's a severe weather threat. I hope that helps. I feel like I worked through that a little bit better uh, than I thought maybe I would, but. Um, hope that helps. Ask some questions. I've got all the comments called up, so I should be able to, to answer some things later this morning. Um, but definitely stay safe out there with the severe weather. The rest of the southeast, I mean, we've already talked about this, um, but this is the area of storms we will watch. The, the big question is, as we make our way into tomorrow morning, what will these storms look like as we're waking up tomorrow morning? Are we going to have a line of storms working their way to the, the western Carolinas? Are we going to have a lot of storm action? and northern Alabama, northern Georgia, a lot of heavy rain. That's a big question because if this is like this tomorrow morning, it's going to affect our severe weather threat for the Carolinas tomorrow. So we got to watch this. But outside of that, we pretty much already covered the southeast. Can't rule out some isolated thunderstorms in Florida today. The northeast, much quieter today. Um, we had some confirmed tornadoes, and I believe southeast mass got very active. It was very stormy. Hope you guys are faring well. Hope no significant damage was caused. Um, you know, Northeast has been very active so far this week, but as we make our way into later this afternoon, this evening, some isolated downpours are very possible in New York State, Northern Pennsylvania, and we make our way into the overnight hours. I think a lot of rain could begin to move and basically take over the state of Ohio, some rain possible in Northern Michigan. And I think that you guys are probably going to wake up to some rainy, maybe even some stormy conditions in the Western half of, uh, the western half of Pennsylvania tomorrow, even into the southeast, the southern tier of New York State. I think you'll wake up to some rain uh, to greet your Thursday morning for sure. Outside of that, pretty chill weather. South Central U.S., besides what's going on right now, um, the rest of the day, 
pretty pretty calm. We've already talked about this. Uh, there could be some showers that, uh, for extremely lucky souls that might pop up pop up somewhere in Texas, northern Texas. Uh, consider yourself very lucky if that happens. Outside of that, it's not a whole lot to speak on in the South Central U.S. You're just hot, miserable, and just, yeah, you're very, very hot. Um, the North Central U.S., I, I, there is an area that we need to mention, and that is some clusters of storms right here from, I mean, maybe even extreme southeast, not sort of, <laughs> extreme, low, uh, extreme southeast in North Dakota through Minnesota, through Wisconsin, even the UP of Michigan, you guys could see some clusters of storms. <clears throat> and we'll just go on and take a closer look at this. Um, some action could get going. You know, watch out in extreme northern areas of Wisconsin and around the Duluth area. Storms are possible. We could just get an area of more organized storms that begin to really get going here in kind of northern Wisconsin. They could drift into sections of the UP of Michigan, stronger to, maybe strong to severe storms that are maybe stronger than this first round get going kind of around let's see if we can name some towns basically up that highway 53 corridor rice lake spooner cable hayward um, all the way up to superior ashland you guys definitely get some storms later this afternoon it's quite possible these could drift all the way into the green bay area later tonight and um, even cross across areas of extreme eastern up of michigan later tonight eventually making their way into the northern sections of michigan so um, the western U.S., much quieter compared to yesterday. Some showers could drift into western Montana. Some showers are possible in western Washington State. Some showers and storms possible in northern Arizona, uh, western areas of New Mexico. I, I definitely think you're going to get a lot of widespread storm activity in this region right here today, later this afternoon, this evening. Could cause some flash flooding. Be careful. Could get an isolated storm or two to get going here in central Utah. Storms are possible as we're getting into tomorrow morning for northern Arizona, southern Utah. Temperatures today, um, very hot if you're along the immediate Gulf coastline and about an hour or two inland. Very, very hot, very miserably hot. It just continues to be brutal. Uh, Florida will be extra hot today compared to what you normally are. Carolinas, you know, 80s and 90s, nothing totally uh, unusual for this time of the year. Northeast, um, pleasant. 60s, 70s, and 80s just depends on how low or high in elevation you are. Right here in the middle of the Ohio Valley, um, Mississippi Valley, um, some some rain could keep you guys cool today in this area of the country. But if you're not being affected by rain, you'll warm well into the 80s in Indiana and Ohio, Kentucky today. The middle of the country right here in the Great Plains, widespread 80s, uh, pleasant conditions. Cooler than average up here in areas of the Pacific Northwest, everywhere else. It's just elevation driven, guys. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you all for bearing with me with that. I uh, appreciate the prayers, guys. And um, uh, I probably will have a video tonight. We will see. I'm exhausted. I'm really worn down. It's been a, uh, we had, so by the way, soccer practice went awesome last night. It went great. Um, it was just, the heat is next level. Doing soccer in, in, uh, in, in late summer, early fall is a different beast than doing soccer in the springtime in South Carolina. I'll tell you that. Uh, but God bless all y'all. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.